Welcome to the correct views. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give, a, I'm gonna give a, a thumbs up here, a hat tip to Mark Dice before I do this. You know, the good thing here about Joe Biden is that even though he has stranded Americans, even though he stranded our allies and he has stranded some of the Afghans who stood by us when we needed them. Even though he stranded them, the good thing is it doesn't seem like he would ever strand anybody who is directly responsible for his well-being. Oh, wait, what's this? Again, I told you it was my Mark Dice hat tip. Um, me media, I... Wall Street Journal report. Translator who helped rescue Biden in Afghanistan in 2008 stranded. And literally the man's like, hey... Hey, Gravelin Joe over here. Hey, remember when I saved your life? Could you maybe save mine? Listen to this. Look, look, look with your eyes, people. Fat cam. An Afghan a translator who helped to rescue now President Joe Biden in 2008 is stranded inside the country, reported the Wall Street Journal on Tuesday. Well, he probably doesn't even remember. Then again, he probably remembers anything that happened you know, in 2008, he just can't remember anything that happened two days ago. This was the day after the United States completed its withdrawal from the country after an almost 20-year war. Hello, Mr. President. Save me and my family, Mohammed, who requested that his full name not be publicized, told the publication, don't forget me here. Mohammed, who along with his family has been in hiding from the Taliban, was a 36-year-old interpreter for the U.S. Army in 2008 when two U.S. Army Black Hawk helicopters made an emergency landing in Afghanistan during a blinding snowstorm, according to the Wall Street Journal. Biden was then a Democrat U.S. Senator from Delaware. Along with Biden, then-Senator John Kerry, he's been known to stick knives in many backs of his comrades. That's not good. And uh, Chuck Hagel, Republican, were on board. Maybe Hagel will help. And you, know, you never know. The rest of the story went like this, according to the Wall Street Journal. I'm not going to watch the video. As a private security company with the former firm Blackhawk and U.S. Army soldiers monitored for any nearby Taliban fighters, the crew sent out an urgent call for help. At... Bagram Airfield, Mohammed jumped into a Humvee with a quick reaction force from the 82nd Airborne Division, and he drove two hours into the nearby mountains to rescue them. He went the extra mile for you, Joe. Two hours worth of miles. The extra miles. Mohammed, he literally went the extra mile. It's not even figurative. Who's with me? Comments, please. Mohammed spent much of his time in a tough valley where the soldiers said he was in more than a hundred firefights with them. I mean, we are talking about a literal hero here, people. Their army helicopters emergency landing in the valley about 20 miles southeast of Bagram Airfield wasn't in the area that was Taliban controlled, but it wasn't exactly friendly. The day before, the 82nd Airborne had killed nearly two dozen Taliban insurgents in a major fight about 10 miles away, said soldiers who fought there. So this man was in dangerous territory. It wasn't like he was going amongst his own people just to help somebody who had a proverbial helicopter, flat tire, I'm kidding, in a snowstorm. This was, this was major. It was like going to help your friend get his flat tire fixed, you know, in a gang zone which is pretty much what these fascist Islamists are. Um, Islam is fa Islamofascism is a real thing, and it is separate from Islam. I understand that. While trying to stay warm in the helicopter, the three men joked about throwing snowballs at the Taliban, the senator said later. In other words, they were afraid. They were like, we're screwed. We were going to send Biden out to fight the Taliban with snowballs, but we didn't have to do it, Mr. Kerry said after they were rescued. Instead, you know why they weren't stuck with snowballs? Because Mohammed joined the 82nd Airborne Division Humvees in three Blackwater SUVs as they barreled through thick snow to find the choppers. 
The senators were sped back to the U.S. base with the convoy, said Matthew Springmeyer, who was leading the Blackwater security helicopters that day. The defense, defense contractor that Mohammed had worked for lost records he needed for his visa application, according to the Wall Street Journal, which also reported that Mohammed went to the airport in the Afghan capital of Kabul where forces said that he, but not his family, could get through. I can't leave my house. I'm very scared, he said. Now, granted, I think I think it may have been wise for him to leave because I think because of the way the laws work, and I could be wrong, it might be easier for him, him to get his family here if he was already here. But just the same, let that sink in, friends. Joe Biden didn't just leave Americans. He let someone behind who was responsible for directly saving his life. He went through miles of driving for two hours in a snowstorm with the Taliban who would have happily killed him if they would have known what he was doing. Does that bother anybody but me? Leave a message in the comment line.